This is my wrapped Mark VI Fiesta ST. And for those of you that have been following my channel for a while, you'll know that this is a totally DIY job. For those of you that have been following me on Instagram will know that in the week leading up to Ford Fair this year, it was pretty much eat, sleep, wrap, repeat for about five days straight, getting this thing ready for the show. But all you guys have really seen is that one minute it was black and the next, it was wrapped in this satin macro red color. So I thought it was about time I showed you the process of us wrapping this car. Now, you should have already seen the color by this point because I would have showed you the car at Ford Fair at Silverstone before this video comes out, but I wanted to come back and revisit us actually wrapping the car so you could see how the process all goes down. Not that this is a how-to by any means, this is our first time doing this, but nevertheless, we wanted to show you our experiences with wrapping our first car. We we're up in Ash's dad's garage, thought I'd say a massive thank you to Ash's family for letting us come up here and do this. And also a massive thanks to Kev for spending all day yesterday clearing out the garage for us. You've made such a lot of space in here so we can get a good job done on this wrap. So thank you very much. Now we're not quite ready to start wrapping just yet. There's a few more little bits that need to happen. You'll have seen in a previous video where we stripped most of the front of this car down. So we took out the grills and the fog lights around and loads of stuff on the back of the car as well. But there's still a few little bits that we needed to leave in so we could drive it up here and so we could actually wash the car and decontaminate the paintwork. So the headlights are still in for the minute, but they'll be coming out soon. Obviously the side repeaters are still in, the door strips are still on. We need to take those off. The wing mirrors and all that assembly has got to come off. Uh, we've removed these little strips up here. They're all off, so that's okay. The door handle's got to come off. The petrol cap's going to have to come off. We are going to jack the car up before we do any of the arches. The side skirts are going to have to come off. The rear lights are going to have to come off. The third brake light's got to come off. We need to take off this boot handle, which I have removed. It is just in there loosely. Same with the lock. That should be nice and quick to take off. So there's still quite a few little bits to do before we can start wrapping. Then we just need to give the car a final wipe down. I've got some panel prep and some microfiber towels just to wipe down each panel. And then we can start laying the vinyl. Right, okay, so we're ready to start laying our first panel. We've decided we're gonna start on the bonnet because it's hopefully gonna be one of the easiest things to do. Probably won't turn out that way. This will probably take us all day, but we're gonna start on the bonnet anyway. So we're gonna measure out to see what sort of size piece of vinyl we need. Okay, so the bonnet is 141 centimeters wide and the wrap is 152. So we've got 11 centimeters to play with or five and a half on each side. So let's check the length. So we're looking at about 94 centimeters. So we want to give ourselves plenty either side to tuck it under. So what do you reckon? Do we go 110? 110. Yeah. So I think we'll actually get the width of the wrap across. So for the width of the bonnet, and then we'll cut a meter or 1.1 meters to give us enough to make sure we can wrap the whole thing lengthways. No pressure. <laughs> right, so we're seconds into, well, not even laying our first panel yet. And we've already found our first amateur mistake. We didn't have anything to actually put the wrap on. So we're actually in a different room. We're upstairs in the garage and we found this sort of scaffolding kind of set up and we've just put a long plastic tube over that to hold the wrap on. And we have to cut it up here and then move it downstairs, but that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, if you're gonna wrap your own car, make sure you've got something to put the wrap on. Now it's worth noting that with some vinyls, you can't actually use them at 90 degrees because they look different at different angles. But with this one, luckily it's the same, whichever way you use it. So we were able to maximize the width of the roll when wrapping the bonnet. So with the vinyl cut, we've just laid it on the roof for the time being while we finish prepping the bonnet for the wrap. So I'm just gonna wipe down the bonnet with some panel prep just to make sure it's nice and clean, ready for us to lay the first piece. Just making sure we get right under 
the bottom edge of the bonnet so that we can tuck the wrap under and it's not going to be dirty underneath and hopefully then it won't lift. Right, so we're going to have to concentrate quite a bit on this. So sorry if this first bit is a little bit boring, but we wanted to take you with us through the very first vinyl panel that we're ever going to lay. We've never done this before, so we'll probably get it wrong a few times, but I thought this would be a better way of doing it. And then later on in the video, once we start to learn how we're going to do it and you know start to get a technique for it, fingers crossed, then maybe we'll speed things up a little bit or show you a few cuts or maybe talk you through what we're doing. But at the minute we're just, like I say, we're learning, first time we've ever done it. So bear with us when we let our first panel and then hopefully things will get a bit more exciting as we go. We started off by offering up the first piece roughly where we wanted it and holding it in place with magnets. We then decided to peel off the backing, but what you'll see a lot of people doing is just peeling off the whole backing and then trying to stick it all down and do what they call glass in a panel. But we didn't think we had that in us straight away. So what we ended up doing was peeling back half the backing and then just cutting this piece off and just trying to lay one side first because we thought we'd be probably at this for quite a long time. We didn't want like the vinyl to lose its stickiness or anything like that because it could have picked up dust and dirt and all sorts of horrible things like that and maybe not stuck better if we'd peeled the whole thing off to start with. Now, if you've seen any wrapping videos before, you'll probably notice people squeegeeing out air bubbles and creases quite easily. But as soon as we went at this with the squeegee, we actually found out that the wrap wrinkled up quite badly. So there's quite a lot of pulling the wrap back up and then trying to relay it. Next, I just had a go with using my hands and the glove, which actually worked out a lot better. I just seemed to have a lot more control using my fingers to squeeze out any little creases or air bubbles, but it was quite slow going. Now, this vinyl does supposedly have air release in it, but like I say, with the squeegee, it just didn't seem to be happening. In fact, I found it that difficult, I was starting to get a little stressed. This is really hard. Can we swap a second because I'm sure we're kidding. It's because you're holding it up like this. Like, what the <laughs> What are you doing? I'm trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you holding it like that? Sorry about that one, Ash. Anyway, we swapped over and then Ash had a go with the squeegee, but soon realized the same as me that it was definitely much easier doing it by hand. We got a big chunk of this first piece actually laid, and that way we could work on a little section each rather than one of us holding the wrap while the other one laid it. And once we got into doing this, we actually managed to pick up quite a good bit of pace. But it wasn't long until we ran into some more problems. As we got towards the edges of the panel, we noticed the wrap was actually starting to bunch up and we really had a tough time finishing off the edges. So we decided to take stock and see how long it's taken. 23 minutes. Really? I'm not sure if we were getting brave or just desperate, but we tried some heat and then tried to stretch the vinyl over the edges to help with the bunching. This did help to an extent, but we still had to work out loads of little bubbles and creases right on the edge before we could finally finish the first half of the bonnet. Okay, so this is taking us quite a long time. We are struggling with it. Like I said, this is our first panel, so I don't think we're gonna be able to show you us doing the whole bonnet just because it's gonna to take too long. So we're gonna crack on, we're gonna do a little bit more and then we'll bring you back in if there's anything we come across or we might just bring you back in when we finish the bonnet and then we can sort of talk about some of the difficulties we've had or you know things we found went well and just different things like that and then maybe go into another panel a little bit later. I'm not quite sure, like I said, we've never done this before and it is difficult to film while we're trying to concentrate and do it so yeah we'll catch up with you in a little bit and hopefully this bonnet will be laid right okay so we have done quite a lot as you can see the bonnet is now laid we've tucked everything under and we post heated the wrap as well we've also removed the front bumper and we've jacked the car up and put it on axle stands so that we can get the arch liners out and then we can wrap the wings because that's what we're going to do next i'm sorry that we've sort of kind of cut from you know having maybe a third of the bonnet laid and then now we've just finished it, but like we were, we just cracked on, we were really concentrating. It has taken us quite a long time. Like we're probably what, how many hours do you reckon? Like two, three hours further on than we were when we last filmed. So that's just, you know, goes to show how long it is taking. Hopefully we can do a good job on the wings. So we'll bring you back in when ready to do them. But for now, we're just gonna crack on with the prep, moving the arch liners and just getting the wings ready to wrap. Love to say that just like painting, it's all about the prep and then the last little bit is laying the color on here but with vinyl wrapping i'm telling you all the work is in laying the vinyl it is really difficult but it really does help if you've got a nice clean surface to wrap over so the arch liners are out and we hope we've got it nice and clean we've taken the side skirts off as well so that we can wrap all the way down to the bottom there and i think we're almost about ready to cut the next pieces of vinyl to wrap the wings how are we feeling ash Nervous. <laughs> no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's a lot of work, but it doesn't stretch. Like I've watched loads of videos on YouTube, and you think oh, it'll be fine. You just pull it tight, and it'll get all the creases out. But no, no. <laughs> it's been like 
uh, laying a piece of vinyl that's got more creases than the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Yeah, like to be fair, I mean, I don't know if I've gone over this yet, but this vinyl is not expensive vinyl by any means. It's definitely not the cheapest, I don't think, around, but it's not expensive by any means. And it is a difficult colour as well. This is satin matte chrome red. I don't know how you can get all those colours in one vinyl, but apparently you can. And if there's one thing I've heard about wrapping, well, chrome in particular, it's that it doesn't stretch well. And when you do stretch it, if you overstretch it, it kind of distorts the colour. You can see a little bit here where we may have just overstretched it slightly. So I'm guessing that that's what's happened. It's kind of distorted the color. So that's what Ash was talking about when he said it doesn't really stretch. Like you can stretch it, but it doesn't come out so well. So we are having to work really hard to get it into all the different like contours of the body. And to be fair, we've only really had these challenging bits to do so far. So there's definitely a long way to go, but I think we can get it done. I think it's gonna look so good when this car is fully wrapped. Okay, so we're moving on to the passenger wing. So we're just gonna give this a quick wipe down with the panel prep. And then we've cut our piece of vinyl now. Like I said earlier, I believe, when we did the bonnet, um, this vinyl is 152 centimeters wide. So it looks like we've got a lot of excess, but we had to do too much one way. So it's either gonna be width ways or height. So we've gone with the width. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to use some of the offcuts from this, like from around the wheel and things like that to do, uh, like the, uh, like the, uh, wing mirrors, like the wing mirrors door and strips. the door strips and handles. jacking point covers, the door handles, things like that. So, you know, hopefully we won't waste too much vinyl because as long as we cut it off now while the backing's still on, it means we can still use it later. This has been a lot easier than the bonnet. This is only taking us, what, we've been at this like 20 minutes so far? Yeah, this is all right. Yeah, the bonnet took us like two and a half, maybe three hours. So we're doing a lot better with that the wings. sounds awful, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it that does, sounds yeah. sounds horrendous. Yeah, but Matt Armstrong said he took, what was it, five days to wrap his M4. Yeah, it's a bigger car, but he's done it before, so. And he was on his own, but I don't care. I think we're doing well. Okay, the wing is done. Everything's tucked in. We post heated it and this is looking so good. But Ash just wants to show you this really quickly. Come on, mate. How, how proud are you of this? Look at this tuck in. Look at the tuck on that door. Hang on, let me spin the camera the other way so I can get the lens a little bit closer. Look at that. A paint finish. Flawless. Wouldn't get this kind of colour from a paint, mate. I know there's a lot of this like kind of stuff here, all these little lumps and bubbles and stuff, but that's literally in the bodywork underneath because all this from like here down is all going to be covered by the side skirt, so we're not worried about that. But yeah, that is the wing done, and it looks awesome. Right, other wing. We're not going to show you that one because it's pretty much just the same as this side. So we're going to smash that out, and then we'll bring you back in when we've got another panel to do. Right, okay, the second wing is on, and just before we go in and take a closer look at it, I've just noticed this from looking at the car from the front. Look how much wider it looks now with the wings in this wrap. I think the colour really brings out those lines and makes the arches look so much wider. But let's go and have a look at this. Now, I didn't actually touch this panel. Ash and his girlfriend Catherine did this. And look at the job they've done. That looks mega. It's so much better than the side that I did. <laughs> I helped on. So we have a look under here. Look at that. I'm so gassed for this. Absolute quality. So that's the second wing done. And now I think we're gonna try and get ahead because the goal for today was to do the bonnet and the two front wings. So we're gonna try and get ahead. We're gonna do the small panel on the boot, see if we can get that done. And then we've got a lot less to do. We've got. Four more days after today, and I think we're well on track. So let's keep going, team. 
We expected the boot panel to be quite easy, but then we realized the massive recess where the number plate sits. So what we tried to do was actually lay this recess first and then work out from there because we didn't think we'd be able to stretch the wrap down into the recess. It was getting quite late at night and the temperature was also dropping quite quickly, which caused us to rip this piece of vinyl. So we decided to leave it for the night and come back with a fresh head tomorrow, but we didn't start on this panel the next day. We thought we'd have some time to think about it and see how we could lay this a little bit better. Right, okay, it is wrap day number two, and today we're hoping to get both sides and the doors done. So the rear quarter all the way down the roof line and the doors as well. We've had to remove the door trims this morning. Now they have been an absolute pig to remove. They're off, they're standing there, but there's so much, right, this one has definitely been off before because a lot of the clips are broken. There's loads of the big lumps of this like white glue kind of stuff. God knows what that is, but that was a nightmare to get off. It wouldn't come off with any sort of heat. You had to cut through it, but they're off. The other side was okay. The other side wasn't too bad at all. It was kind of just the original adhesive, we think. Got another member of the crew, Martin's here helping out. How you doing, Mark? Yeah, good, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Working hard. I'm not doing anything yet. I'm just filming. But next thing to come off is the spoiler because right here, the spoiler covers part of the rear quarter. So we've got to get that off. And then hopefully we can wrap what's going to be one of the biggest, but I don't think one of the hardest panels because it's quite a small, like thin area. Obviously down here is quite thick, but it's just the same as doing the wing, which we didn't do too badly with. So, oh, wish us luck. I'll try and film as much as I can, but it is difficult and we are racing against time. Okay, so another strange little cut, but it is really hard to film in here because I've got a lot of space and look at the size of this piece of vinyl. So yeah, we've, uh, we've cut a three meter piece to go all the way down the side of the car and we're going to cut out a section for the door and I'll cut out some stuff down here, you know, wherever there are bits. It's really hard to like picture it now with this on here, but uh, it's really hard to film. We've got three of us in here <laughs> trying to all lay this at the same time. So it is going to be difficult, but we'll try and show you as much as possible. Now, unfortunately, I didn't film much of either of the sides at all because these were really hard panels to do and even harder to film while we were trying to do it. And we had three of us in there as well, so it was just difficult to get any sort of good camera angle of us actually laying this panel. Now, I think a bit of heat and stretching would have really helped, but we were kind of scared to use the heat gun too much because of the color distortion we got on the bonnet. But nevertheless, we got the two rear quarters laid and then Ash's girlfriend, Catherine, came back. So Ash and Catherine laid one door while me and Martin did the other. Now, I genuinely thought that the larger, flatter panels would be relatively easy to lay, but it turns out they're just not. And I think it's because there's such a large surface area, and once you've got a big portion of the wrap stuck down, it's just trying to pull from so many different directions, and it just makes it so much harder. And then the other thing, if you do have to pull the wrap up at all, you have to pull it up over a much larger area and basically lay the whole piece that you've just pulled up again. Right, guys, it's wrap day four. I don't think we've really shown you anything for a couple of days because it's been so hard. We've got both sides wrapped now. That's all sorted. What do you think of the black roof? I actually quite like it. We've got enough vinyl, I think, because we've ordered some more, but we'll see. I do like the black roof. Anyway, so yesterday we managed to get, I think we did the driver's side, was it? The rear quarter and the door, and we did the rear bumper now on camera. This looks stunning. Like you guys can't quite see how bad it is. This was really difficult. We really struggled with this. There's an awful lot of like wrinkles and stuff in it. There's a lot of grit that got under it, probably from these recesses not being properly cleaned. We had big trouble up here. We've managed to flatten most of this out, but it has been really, really difficult. Across here, what we're thinking, I've got some knifeless tape. If you've seen that before, we're gonna run that along here. We're gonna do an inlay on the top. Uh, just to try and cover that up. So hopefully that'll sort it just to show you down this side. All looking good down there. But we've realized something. We were really struggling with this vinyl because it is one of the cheaper films and we didn't think it stretched because because of the color as well, this satin macro and red, it does distort a little bit. When you stretch it, you can see a little bit of color distortion here and there's a little bit on the bonnet might be a better place to show you. Yeah, you can just sort of see the color distortion here. That's from when you stretch it. If you stretch it too much, that's what happens. And this stuff, we are finding it difficult to work with. When you watch like proper wrapping videos, you know, professionals doing it, it just looks so effortless the way they just squeegee everything out with this. It just wrinkles up and then you have to apply a lot of heat to get that out. And a lot of the time, like I say, it just distorts, but it is really hard to work with. 
we sort of got a technique down last night with heat and stretching and learning sort of how this stuff responds and when it's going to overstretch so we know when to stop so hopefully we'll be able to do a bit more on the front bumper and get a better job of that and we'll try and show you some of it but it is really difficult to film and concentrate on doing it at the same time but that's pretty much an update for now so we'll catch up with you when we're starting to wrap the front bumper now the front bumper we did differently to every other panel on the car so far because we actually removed the whole piece of backing paper all at once before we started to lay the panel we also decided to get stuck in with the heat this time and this made it a lot easier to stretch the wrap and tuck it into all the little recesses like the fog light surrounds and places like that we started to learn at this point how to actually stretch the wrap without distorting the color and we actually did a really good job sadly i didn't get any more footage of the front bumper but i managed to get some really good shots of us wrapping this boot panel so just sit back and enjoy And that is pretty much everything we had time for before Ford Fair. There were just a few final little bits of trimming and refitting some of the trims like the door strips and the side skirts. All those little bits were wrapped off camera by Catherine and she did an awesome job on those. So they all had to go back on but we didn't really get a chance to show all of that. There was the boot handle, the door handles, the fog light surrounds, the rear reflectors, the petrol cap cover, the tow and eye cover, the jacking point covers, the fog light rings, and all these other little bits that we pretty much forgot about, but we used every available second to get this car finished and put back together ready for Ford Fair. Then finally the TRC kit could go back on, the headlights could go back in, the side repeaters can go back in and all the other little bits we needed to actually drive the car and then some little finishing touches we actually fitted at the show. So there we go, that was the process of us wrapping my Mark 6 Fiesta ST. Now I'm sorry I didn't manage to show you absolutely everything that was involved in this, like I know for certain I didn't really show you anything of us cutting and tucking any of the vinyl, but there are a few things like this mirror cap and the rear bumper that we need to wrap again. And I still want to wrap the spoiler. I've also got a plan for the roof, now I'm not going to wrap this in the same colour as the car, but there is something that I want to do with this, but I'll let you know that in a future video. Now another thing that I know I talked about in the video but I didn't actually explain or say what we were doing or even show you us doing it, it was post heat in the wrap and again that's something i'm going to go over in another video what i think i want to do is do a full walk around of the car in a separate video and show you all the little bits where there's any sort of imperfections in the wrap or you know places i can explain kind of things that happened or things we learned what went well what went wrong and all sorts of stuff like that so if that's something you want to see then let me know in the comments below and then i think in that video as well i'll cover the costs like what it actually cost me to buy the vinyl and the total cost of actually doing the wrap because there was quite a bit of other stuff that's needed to do this you don't just buy the vinyl and it goes on and that's the only cost you have so i'll cover that in that video as well and then like i just mentioned i also need to rewrap the rear bumper so what i think i'm gonna do is maybe do another video 
of just absolutely everything of us rewrapping just the rear bumper so you literally get to see it all from start to finish but with that being said i think this video has gone on long enough so be sure to let me know in the comments what you think of the job we did remember this was totally diy and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those future videos but for this one it's time to end so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time